So now we're going to get into the forwarding within the ACI fabric a little bit. We're going to talk about exactly how the forwarding is done. Um, again, I'm not going to go super, super deep, uh, but we are going to talk about how that unicast based forwarding is achieved. We're going to talk a little bit about the pervasive SVI gateway that's going to be basically propagated on each of the leaf switches once we actually start to get endpoints hooked up to the fabric. So I'm going to go ahead and again get my ugly mug out of the picture here. So imagine this being, you know, our typical fabric. What, what we'll see, uh, and let's just give these leafs a name kind of as we go through this discussion. This might be leaf one, this might be leaf two, this will be leaf three, and this will be leaf four. Make sense? Four, four leaf switches, one, two, three, and four. So what we're going to do is ACI really works to kind of decouple the identity um, aka you know the IP address from the location and at this point the location is going to be our VTEPs and, and remember each one of these leaf switches it basically has a, a VTEP or a VXLAN tunnel endpoint so again I really compare this a little bit to LISP because that honestly is is kind of what it feels like to me now remember hosts within the fabric are always going to be connected to our leaf switches and only the leaves matter of fact you cannot hook up an endpoint to a spine switch, right? So as we connect these hosts, or as we'll, we'll learn to call them endpoints to the fabric, their MAC and IP addresses are gonna be learned by these leaves. Now, with, with this specific example here, I really only have um, the IP addresses kind of signified. Uh, know that both the, the MAC as well as um, the IP address is gonna be learned at that directly connected or that upstream leaf switch. So what you're going to see is that this information is going to be propagated into a local table on the leaf switch uh, that is aptly named the, the local station table. Okay, so we'll see, we pop up, I'm only going to show you a, an application of one here, um, but we're going to have a local station table propagated and, and again this is going to be local entries off of this local switch. So again we have uh, 192, 168, 2599, which is that guy there, and then we have 10, 10, 0, 10, which is this guy right here. Uh, so basically, these are local entries, so they're going to be based, you know, signified off a port. We're going to be able to look those up in the MAC address table if we need to, uh, but they're tied to this specific switch, okay? So this, this local station table, again, is only for local entries. Now the LEAF, using an internal, what I call an internal fabric mechanism, it's actually a little protocol that I've seen in some Cisco Live uh, presentations. They call it the, the COOP protocol or the Council of Oracles protocol because they, 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 again, I've heard it referred to that the spine switches, which are these guys up here, right, are also known as the oracles because they know about everything. Because what happens is through this, this Council of or Oracles protocol, um, these leaf switches are basically going to go out and they're going to tell the spines about all the endpoints that are connected. So the spines, again, being the grandmasters of the fabric, uh, will ultimately know about all the hosts that are connected to the fabric, and they propagate this information into something that we call the proxy station table. And this information is going to be replicated between all the different spine switches, again, they're all the oracles, right? And these spine switches can hold, you know, a million plus entries. I haven't looked at the, the latest verified scalability guides for some of these, but I know at the time, uh, at least when I wrote this, it was a million plus uh, that was signified. Now, all the leafs, the leaf switches, I should say, have two different forwarding tables. They have that one that we just spoke about for the locally attached host, right, the local station table, and they also have something that's called a global station table. Now, the, the global station table is where routes are connected for other non-local hosts that are actually connected to the fabric, right, tied to their respective VTIPs or their respective leaf switches. So the global station table itself is going to be propagated, uh, or you could say it's going to hold cached entries because of previous flows that have occurred within the fabric. So, you know, in this case, uh, on this switch, we've got 172, 31, 21, 2 in our global station table. That pretty much indicates that at some point in time, you know, this guy has communicated through this leaf switch, right? So we've cached an entry basically in there and, and tied that specific host route to that specific VTEP, right? The L2 VTEP. So, 
This global station table is for, again, entries that we've learned, but they're not local to that individual leaf switch. So looking at this, what do you guys think would happen? And let's, let's just throw out a scenario here, get a different color. What if, you know, 10, 10, 0, 10 wanted to communicate with 10, 10, 0, 11? Right? What if, what if they, they wanted to talk? Well, he would send some frames in right to his locally attached leaf switch. And this leaf switch would do a lookup. He'd say, yep, he, I, I, I don't know about this guy, nor do I know about him in the global station table. So what ends up happening now is he has to figure out which V-tip that, that guy is tied to. So he looks in his global station table and, and does what's called essentially uh, an AnyCast V-tip lookup. So he, and again, I kind of compare this to list because it's kind of like going out there and asking the mapping server or the mapping resolver, hey, how do I reach this guy? You know, what location is he at? Uh, same scenario here, we're trying to figure out which VTIP that specific host is tied to. Now, since the spines know about everything going on in the fabric, what we do is we actually query one of those spines. Okay, because again, we have kind of this wild card here. We're, we're, we're able to go out to what's known as an AnyCast VTAP. And what, what happens is, if you want to peel back the, the covers a little bit, each one of these guys actually has a loopback zero. Okay, and that's basically the spine's unique identity. That, that loopback zero is their, their personal identity. They're also going to have another interface that they all share. And this is going to be that AnyCast VTIP. So it doesn't really matter where we go, right? Because we're going to do it, we're going to do a lookup for that AnyCast VTIP. We're going to send a query out. It doesn't matter which link it gets hashed out on. Say ultimately it arrives at this guy. He does the lookup and he's going to say, oh, you can reach 101011 through VTIP L4. Okay, so what we have the ability to do now is we can come in here and as we receive, in this case it's going to be a classical Ethernet frame, right, because they're on the same subnet, what we're going to do is we're going to take this classical Ethernet frame and we're going to encapsulate it. Okay, we're going to throw our VXLAN or our extended VXLAN header on there and we're going to say, hey, this source is going to be coming from VTIP L1, right? And the destination is going to be going to VTIP L4. And we're going to forward that. And again, because the fabric, we're able to use uh, equal cost multipathing. We're even able to use flowlet um, based multipathing if we want. Uh, the traffic's going to end up getting hashed out on one of these links. And let's say we send it out here. It's going to arrive to this guy. He's going to know that the shortest path, shortest cost path to VTIP L4 is straight down this link. He will get this frame and basically just decapsulate it and forward it onto this host. Okay, so that is how ultimately the, the forwarding is going to work through the fabric. Okay, we are going to encapsulate it within VXLAN. It's going to be decapsulated on egress at basically that destination VTAP. All right. Now I did throw a command in here because this is something um, that, that I found. You can't always log into the CLI of any of your leaf switches. Run the command show endpoint, and it's going to give you a list of all the different endpoints that have been discovered off of that individual leaf switch. I always found that handy. There are ways you can find that through the GUI as well. Uh, actually, not too hard. You're just going to end up going to the endpoint group to, to locate it. Uh, but I found this was a pretty handy way to do so as well because I, I still at heart am a CLI guy. <laughs> Um, the other thing that I want to discuss with you about some of the unicast-based forwarding is that ACI also supports what's known as a pervasive gateway. Uh, this is very, very, very similar, uh, if you're familiar with VXLAN with eVPN control plane, to the distributed IP anycast gateway. So it's very, very familiar to that. Basically, we as the engineer, we're going to come in and we're going to be configuring what's known as those bridge domains that we talked about in a previous video, right? And when we configure the bridge domain, basically, we go in and we propagate those subnets within that bridge domain. So we, as the administrator, you, you know, I think you guys have probably watched the demo video uh, of the bridge domain configuration by this point, but we don't specify the subnet, right? We specify a gateway address with a subnet mask. So maybe for 10.10.10.0/24 network, we came in and said the gateway is going to be 10.10.10.254/24. 10, 
right? Uh, same thing for these guys. We'd specify a gateway. We could put in 254. We could put 254 in there. Um, but basically, that is how we propagate those subnets into the bridge domain. Uh, again, don't worry if you haven't watched the demo, you can always go back and watch that bridge domain demo and I go through those steps exactly so you'll see me actually putting that endpoint or the that input into there. Now, as we come in here and we start to get endpoints hanging off of these leaf switches. So here you can see we have some endpoints here, we have an endpoint here, and we have an endpoint here. Well, technically, the only leaf switches that contain any of these subnets are this guy and this guy. Okay, this guy has an endpoint, but 172.31.21 isn't inside this bridge domain. So what's going to happen is, based on this specific configuration that you guys are seeing here, is on leaf one and over here on leaf four, we're actually going to propagate a pervasive SVI. So they're going to look exactly the same. Okay, these SVIs are going to have uh, basically a, a, and it's kind of hard because these leaf switches don't have to tie the same VLAN to this bridge domain. We're going to see uh, internally some mappings there, right? But technically, you know, for this specific bridge domain, this guy could have VLAN 8 tied to that bridge domain, and this guy could have VLAN 10 tied to this bridge domain. Again, VLANs are really agnostic now. It doesn't, it doesn't matter what VLAN is tied to that bridge domain. What matters ultimately is that this bridge domain is tied to, you know, let's say VNI number one. As long as on this side, this guy's tied to VNI number one, we've got no problems, right? So what happens is these SVIs, we're going to have all of our subnet gateways on these guys. And again, they're exactly the same on both sides. And what we'll see is that one of these is going to be the primary IP and the others are going to be secondary IPs. So we might see primary over here and secondary and secondary over here. So it, it, it's kind of, again, it's mind blowing, right? Why do we do this? Why, why do we have this functionality here? Why do we have the exact same IPs on the exact same SVIs on the, the differing leaf switches? Well, because it allows for local routing at each leaf switch. So without having the need to pass traffic off to another leaf switch in order for a node to reach its first hop, right? So that's why we go ahead and we propagate that specific SVI and this pervasive SVI gateway functionality at each leaf switch. Because if you think about it, if we didn't do something like this, the forwarding within the fabric would be suboptimal. Okay, we tried to avoid these exact situations with other technologies. I mean, think back, you know, four or five years ago when we started down the fabric path road, um, you know, we were really limited as to where we could run HSRP and VRP before we could use um, the Anycast gateway. Okay, so now with things like, you know, um, VXLAN with the VPN control plane and the IP distributed Anycast gateway. Uh, here we now have the distributed layer three gateways that can run along ACI. They're all providing the same functionality. We can reach any leaf or any one of those nodes, okay, for our first hop functionality, for our first hop routing basically.